Welcome to this quick start tutorial for V-Ray for Revit. In this video, we'll show you how to use V-Ray Swarm, a distributed rendering system that allows you to render on multiple machines at once using a simple web interface. Swarm may be installed alongside V-Ray for Revit, but also may be installed on its own. Now, you do not need to install Revit or V-Ray for Revit on a machine that you just want to use as a render node. If you already have installed V-Ray for Revit with its license, you won't need to install the license server for Swarm. However, on machines that you do not have V-Ray for Revit already installed and licensed, you will need to install the license server and set that up with your proper license for that machine to be able to render in the Swarm. I'm going to go ahead and just install Swarm. You likely don't need to change any of these settings. Just make sure to uninstall any previous installations if you have any and make sure add firewall exceptions is checked on. And we'll also leave the address and port options as is and click install now and that's it. You'll want to install Swarm on all the machines you wish to distribute renders to. Now that we're installed, we get into the configuration for the interface for the node. Open up a web browser. To access the interface, you'll need to type in the browser localhost colon 24267, where that number 24267 is the port you used in the installer. Now, of course, if you change the port during installation, enter that port number instead. Otherwise, 24267 is the default. The first view we see here is the log view. This is where you would see any messages for the node as it is rendering. Click in the upper right corner to open options for the view. Next to that is the ability to enable or disable the node for rendering. Clicking this icon will access the different pages of the interface. Start with configuration. Making any changes to configuration here requires that the node first be disabled for rendering. Go ahead and disable the node and the options are available. Tags allow you to tag this node with a descriptor that defines something about the machine. So let's tag this machine as render farm and click add. All of these nodes will come already with the default tag. Up at the top, We'll click Save to commit the change and re-enable the node. Now, let's click on the network page. This shows all the available Swarm machines on the network. Through this page, you can select a machine and remotely enable or disable it like this. We can select multiple machines using the Shift key while selecting additional nodes. Here we'll copy our local machine settings to the two machines I've got selected. First I'll disable them, then click over here on Copy Configuration. You can see the tags carried over to the two machines, so let's re-enable them. Now let's change to the Resource Usage page. This shows the current usage of the machines from CPU to GPU to memory and network traffic and even storage space available for that node. Now, let's see Swarm used on a Revit project. Let's open up the file swarm.rvt, which you can download from the tutorial page. Now, we have some settings you can load to put us on the same setup here. So, let's go load our settings by going to the V-Ray tab and click Settings in the V-Ray ribbon, and then click on Sharing. Click on Load Settings in the bottom corner and navigate to the swarm.xml file provided with this tutorial. This brings up a number of options. Just go ahead and leave them all checked on and click Import Selected. This just makes sure we're on the same settings, but this is also a great way to be sharing setups for multiple projects. Let's go over the settings for Swarm. Go to the Settings icon in the ribbon. Click Swarm and you'll see the same settings you had in the installer. Click on Refresh to see the tags for the machines that are currently running. You can click on the tags to enable or disable them so that your Swarm render distributes 
only to the machines with that tag. Selecting both will distribute to machines that have one or the other. I'll just leave it on default. Now, click on Engine. Here we can set up how V-Ray renders depending on the quality settings. We'll change the high settings from progressive to buckets. With buckets, you can really see how the other machines on your swarm are helping render. It's also just a little faster to render buckets when using swarm over progressive. Close out of this window. Click on the current view and select render for your view. Next, click on quality and select high. For the resolution, let's use the crop region set at 96 DPI. Go ahead, turn on artificial lights, and the rendering is now ready to go. Now, click on the render button here to enable swarm, as it will be disabled at first. Now, I'll click on render with V-Ray icon to start this rendering. Now, you won't be able to see the other machines jumping in to help this render until V-Ray gets to rendering some buckets. So, we'll elapse a little time here. When the renderer is finished with passes like the light cache, which calculates global illumination, we can see the buckets appear and see that this local machine is working on the image. And you can see that the computer's name is actually in the bucket. In the V-Ray Rendering Progress dialog, Click on the distributed rendering arrow to expand it and a bar that shows how many machines are being used. If you slide the goal slider to the right, you will be adding more machines to this render. You can see a slew of new buckets appear on the image that are being processed by the other swarm machines. Sliding the slider to use a higher percentage of the available render nodes will kick more nodes onto the render as you need. Let's go back to the web browser by just clicking the Launch V-Ray Swarm icon here in the Rendering Progress dialog. This will connect to a random node that is currently rendering, and you can take a look at whatever information you need to know, such as the log, where you can see detailed information on the active render, or even the resources for that node. Now, I can disable a node to take it out of the available machine pool at any time, and it removes that machine from the render. And if I re-enable it, it will be placed back into the rendering pool. So you can dynamically add or remove nodes in a swarm render as needed, and it'll just work. And here we can see the image being finished up with a distributed rendering using V-Ray Swarm, saving me a lot of time over rendering just on one machine. Mm.